Grace and peace, you guys. April Chapman here with the Standard of Truth podcast, where we discuss all things social, cultural, political, and theological from a biblical perspective. I wish I could say that I was in better spirits, but I'd be lying because I'm not. Um, the topic that I want to discuss today um, was very unsettling to me. It made me very upset. And I have titled this video, Blacks Won't Help Themselves, So Should We Stop Trying? Um, I know that's a very, very provocative title. And at this point, I really don't care. Um, and it's because the video that I'm going to cover today, it infuriates me. It infuriates me <laughs> with a level of anger and vitriol of the worst kind. So I'm going to do my best to try to just dial it back a little bit because um, I was so bothered and so annoyed by um, the information that I'm going to share with you today that I, I had to pray, you guys. I had to pray. Now, of course, we are supposed to pray without ceasing, but I had to stop and ask the Holy Spirit to destroy the calcified areas of my heart as it relates to this issue. So if you see a little bit of righteous indignation, um, know that it is really coming from a place of being angry at evil and angry at wickedness. Now in the past, I have covered King Randall of the X School for Boys down in Albany, Georgia. And King Randall, he is a young man that I greatly admire because of his, instead of him talking about, you know, what we should be doing, he instead just puts his head down and he actually gets on his grind and he does what we should be doing. Um, this young man exhibits a level of maturity and tenacity that you don't typically see in young men his age. And so I believe that if anybody should get support and adulation for a job well done, it should be him. Lately, I have been talking about what a devoted family builder is, and he strikes me as a young man that fits the profile of a devoted family builder. Builder, which brings me to my next point. I'm going to share a video from King Randall's Instagram page concerning another roadblock that he has hit as it relates to developing the property that his organization owns down in Albany, Georgia. And I want you to listen to what King Randall has to say. County Commission today, uh, they voted to deny our request for rezoning for 24 acres of the 40 acres that we own for our multi-purpose facility that we were trying to put out there for children um, and underprivileged children who don't have any facilities in that area to service them with tutoring or basketball or anything. Those kids are just kind of out there and have no recreation. And so we want to bring mentors and uh, bring uh, basketball courts and bring, uh, you know, just uh, automotive repair, et cetera. We were trying to bring that out there to the neighborhood and they voted to deny it on today. So the video I'm going to put under this uh, tweet, uh, you'll be able to see what happened at the commission meeting today. It was so crazy because these people accused us of possibly doing fentanyl and cocaine with the children. And I mean, it was it was crazy that the things that they were saying about our school and our boys. And I only put a, a few brief things um, on there that they said because I didn't want the video too long. And to see that all of the people who voted no were all black and the people that voted yes were white and one black person. And I live in a majority black town and my city and the community here always is screaming systematic racism and racism all the time when everybody who is in every major position here is black. And every time that somebody is trying to do something that could benefit the children here, it's like we get asked a thousand questions. But today, you know, they approve, they approve alcohol licensing for this and they approve this restaurant and, and this place and that place, all this little stuff. But when it comes to trying to help children, then I get a thousand questions asked and I confronted them and told them, I'm like, how did you guys not ask us about the actual children? They asked for no data, no statistics, no information about the actual children, all asking me about parking spaces and all that stuff, but nobody asked about the actual children that we'd be trying to serve in that community. And they said that the older people there mattered more than the children who wanted to, to who want this facility out there. Those children weren't able to come speak for themselves because they were in school this morning. But they said the older people there mattered more than the children. And that was absolutely absurd to me. But please, uh, again, 
we're still going to keep working. Um, that doesn't stop anything. We're still going to build out there. Um, we just can't do that type of facility, but uh, we still can uh, put uh, residential basketball courts, et cetera, et cetera, out there. So we're still going to build. We're just going to do something different now um, with it. But please continue supporting us at thexforboys.org. Uh, this is why I have been on social media for quite some time. And um, But you can watch the video next. But please follow us at thexforboys.org. T-H-E-X-F-O-R-B-O-Y-S.org. Thank you so much. Peace. Okay, so you saw that video where um, King Randall was basically express expressing his frustration with what happened. Um, they pretty much blocked the rezoning uh, permit, and he won't be able to build the facility that he was trying to build into that community. Now what I'm going to do is I want to go ahead and play just a few excerpts from the Darty County uh, Commissioner's meeting so that you can hear from the residents themselves tell you why they do not want um, the X school for boys to develop this particular type of facility in their community. In the neighborhood, watch out there. And uh, <clears throat> I'm rising in opposition to the project this morning. Um, I start with the last thing Randall said. We are concerned about firearms in the neighborhood. You know, you, you don't you don't you don't you don't bring that kind of atmosphere in a retired community. You know, we have a recreation facility on the other side of the neighborhood, Robert Cross Park. Mm -hmm. We have a multi-purpose building over there. You know, you can go over there and do whatever you want to do. You know, we don't need a, another facility you know, on the other side of the neighborhood, you know, with, like Randall said, people that we don't know anything about. Mm -hmm. Plus, this project is privately owned and we can't enter it. You know, we're not permitted to go into the place, you know, okay? So, you know, my imagination, you know, tells me, you know, well, since you don't know what's going on, you know, what can you raise sand about unless something spilled over out into the neighborhood? So this could happen. I'm not saying it will, but it could, you know, okay? And if you gonna have a, a science lab or something in that building, you, and you got gun, you know, okay? You know, it's, it's a chemical reaction in that, you know, and you know, I don't know if, if you were really, you know, fixing cocaine or, or, or fentanyl. I don't know what you're doing in that, you know. But I know that this situation isn't open to us, you know, and it's 10 feet from our neighborhood. You know, I mean, you, you can walk out your door and you'll be in the, his neighborhood, you know. And we at Southgate, Little Pond, Riverdale, Blue Springs disapprove of this facility, you know, because of the unknown, you know, and like one of the commissioners asked, you know, well, what would later be the purpose of somebody, the land for somebody else to come use it, you know, for a different purpose, you know, or what if you, you know, can't uphold your end of the bargain, you know, and do what you said you were going to do. You know, talk is cheap, but our lives will be changed by this, you know. So I, I wish you all would deny it. Thank, Thank you, sir. Uh, Mrs. Barbara Dawson. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Barbara Dawson, and I've been living out in Southgate for 30 years. I'm all for helping kids. I used to work with abused kids. But as far as bringing this out in our neighborhood, where this is a family, you know, neighborhood, I have talked with a lot of the neighbors out in the neighborhood, and they are against this. We have a lot of the elderly that walks down Burnaby, up to my Luther King. And they're saying that they would be afraid to walk down there, just coming to our neighborhood, because this is not, you know, what we want in the neighborhood. And what we want, if you want to build something, build more homes, because this is a family, you know, neighborhood. Build more homes. 
And from my understanding, Mr. Randall has other building that he can use for this that he has for the boys' home that he's not using for anything. So if he want to have a boys' home, use the facility he already have and not bring this out in our neighborhood. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Dawson. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and stop it right there because... Um, <laughs> Help me, Holy Ghost. Listen, I'm going to just keep it. I'm going to just, just shoot it straight with y'all, okay? I don't want to hear. I don't want to hear another Negro talk about white supremacy and racism. I don't want to hear it. I don't even want to hear about your myth of oppression and, and, and white supremacy. I'm done. You know why? Because the biggest threat that prevents black people today from flourishing, it's not white supremacy, but it's other black people. And I don't care who gets offended by that statement, nor do I care if it makes you clutch your imaginary pearls. When I first, at first, when I was examining King Randall's situation, uh, probably late last year, at first I was like, okay, it, it's, it's only the black elite you know, that are doing this, right? You know, it's, it's the Afrostocracy. That's, that's the segment of the black elite that I refer to as the politicians, the professors, the pundits, the preachers, and the performers. I was like, it must be them. Those are the main ones and the main reasons why we are so stuck and why forward progress doesn't take place. But then I just realized, no, it's not just the black elite. It's these colored communists. Those are the ones that get on my last nerves. You see, I live here in Metro Atlanta and Atlanta is the bastion of colored communism. If you ever seen it and they are dealing with a segment of colored communism down there in Albany, Georgia, they dealing with the same thing. I'm going to deal with a few of the talking points, right? that this gentleman brought up, right? I don't know this man personally. I'm just gonna go by based on the public words that he spoke. He talked about how one, how this facility is not open to us. Whoever the us is, I don't know. He can only, he can answer that, but I can assume that when he says that this facility is not open to us, he would imply that, this is privately owned, so therefore it's not public use, which typically something that's for public use is government owned, government sponsored, government funded. Track with me for a minute. He then goes that, um, you know, we don't, we don't want, we're concerned. We're, this is a black man, an older black man saying, he is concerned about firearms. Firearms. Now, contextually, this mindless Muppet is not thinking through the category of the fact that the Second Amendment is our American right. And if he knew anything about what King Randall has going on, he would know that he teaches responsible gun ownership and firearm training so that these young boys are empowered and understand the proper use of firearms. Now, mind you, he ain't afraid of the firearms that Pookie and Ray Ray and them have out on the street. But now, now all of a sudden he's concerned about firearms, right? He talked about saying how, you know, this is a facility that is privately owned. That was the, that was the first buzzword that piqued my, my spidey sense to smell, to smoke out the communist Marxist minded Negroes. When he talked about, you know, how it, it, it's privately owned and, you know, we, we, we won't have, you know, any control over it or, you know, we won't be permitted to go in there. So like, well, we, we don't know what's going on in there. And then he says, you know, and then 
And then, you know, my imagination, I said, hold on. Is this a whole grown man who's not telling you what he knows or what he thinks, but rather he's talking about what he feels? This, this, is, this is what the matriarchy produces. This grown man is telling you what he feels, not based on facts, data, statistics, the observable results that King Randall has with what he's doing with these young boys, but rather he talks about, you know, my imagination is what could happen. Not saying it's actually happened, but what could happen. Notice that that fear-mongering language that you heard from him. And then he talked about this this one was this one top the cake, the science lab. He's like, well if there are firearms and a science lab, you know that 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 sounds like a chemical reaction to me. So Basically, the assumption is that whatever is going on from a scientific perspective could cause a chemical reaction because of the mere presence of a firearm. And the next thing you know, he this man done imagined the whole community just blowing up. If these mindless muppets, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. This is where the this is what the feminized matriarchy yields. This is what the feminized matriarchy mind Marxist Marxist indoctrinated baby boomer generation. This is what we're dealing with. This is what we're dealing with. These colored communists, they, the idea if, if King Randall is successful, right? The, the, this track is if King Randall is actually successful, these boys who were once in the streets, wrecking havoc on the community, getting in all kinds of trouble. But if these boys who were once in the street and he manages to teach them how to be upstanding young men and quality citizens and pillars in the community, you do realize that that is a threat. That is a threat to the current matriarchal system. And the weak men who are controlled by these same, the same matriarchal system, they're in cahoots with one another and they are against what King Randall actually is trying to do. And why is that? The reason why they're against it because the civil rights operation of the 1960s completely destroyed the Negro Americans will to do for self. Notice how they said, you know, well, you, you, you can put this facility up, right? But you need to put it somewhere else because we can't control it. My question is, who is the we? Hmm? Who is the we? Also, the current matriarchal system that has been flourishing within the black community, it is run by black women and weak men who do not believe in a purposeful patriarchy. You have the older black men who fall in line and they agree with the prevailing narrative and they're the ones that provide cover for the black women. They're nothing, they're nothing more than the henpecks. This blackness is rooted in matriarchal squalor to where we, I can't even identify. I don't know who those people are. Those are not my people at all. Unless these black, these young black boys are acting a fool and then we can appeal to the government for some types of some sort of solutions, then they're fine with that. But the moment we attempt to do something that has a proven track record of success, it is too much like right. And so therefore they got to, they got to put the roadblock up. These communities, especially those that are occupied with these died in the wool older Democrats who cannot function in freedom, they cannot wrap their minds around the vision of what King Randall is trying to do. And do you want to know why? It's because, think about it, how many programs do you need for a black man who can do for self? Hmm? None. You don't need a government program for that. And if the government is not needed, 
then black women won't have access to daddy government's overreach, nor will any of those darn county commissioners and city council people really have a job because you won't need big budgets for wasteful spending if the community actually changes. Like if someone actually steps up and does something meaningful that actually changes the community, you, social work, the public school system, the county employees, you'll have an entire generation of what's left of these baby boomers who are steep in Marxist ideology. So therefore, all that King Randall represents, it is really destructive for their way of life and for their whole existence. Because what they really want is more government and more control. Anytime a conservative black man tries to stand on his own two feet, what is, what is the first thing that you notice that they do? They have to demonize and attack his character. Like, let, let's accuse him of teaching the boys uh, uh, how to cook crack, right? Let's, let's put the thought into your minds that they might. They might be running guns. We, we don't know. We don't have any proof of that. We don't even need any proof of that. All we have to do is say it to make you question the goodness and the goodwill of what King is trying to do. Here's where I am with this whole situation. The idea that, that white supremacy is the problem. White supremacy is nothing more than black inadequacy. Because one, it's not true. I don't know any white person that is, is supremely ruling and reigning over me in any way, shape, form, or fashion. And then two, it is based on an external characteristic and nothing about your God-given rights, which is your essence and your worth, has anything to do with the color of your skin. I am hoping... I am hoping that King Randall doesn't give up on individualism and the idea of doing for self, but I'm done being constrained by the constructs of my color. That is not me. That is not who I am. I am a Christian. That is where my identity and my value and my worth comes from. My race is the race of the people of God, not this ethnicity stuff. But let's be clear, I am in no way affiliated with those people. Christians are my people, those who want to do the will of my father. I choose character over color and Christ over construct all day long because those Negro Nazis, those are the worst ones. What King Randall is experiencing, he is experiencing discrimination of the highest sorts and of the worst kind. Because see, this is a man he is doing what men are supposed to do. And if boys learn how to be more productive than menacing, right? When they withdraw and reject the mutt culture, that's the menacing, the unruly, and the thuggish culture and behavior, if they divest from that, then the whole prison pipeline that comes from black culture gets destroyed. And they can't have that. The Marxist, communist-minded, Nazi Negroids, they can't have that. They can't see, they, they, they do not want to see that he has what he has done as successful. To them, what he has done is sabotage their way of life. What he has done is he is intruding on the fact that we like things just the way we are. See, we, we got, we got that, that city or that county run facility, facility over there, you know, and we, we got access to that, but, but private enterprise, uh-uh, no, they, they, they feel threatened. They are threatened. And King, which I don't understand, King gonna mess up the money. All of the money that is flowing to these dead end, forever failing programs, that spigot dries up. They like the systemic welfareism. They, they're like, just like a bunch of baby mamas not being able to control and manage their own children. They like that. They love seeing that in the community. 
They cannot have a disciplined man walking around. They need high rates of illegitimate children. And they'd rather notice what the black woman said. You know, we built some homes. They'd rather what she really what she really is probably saying is they'd rather affordable housing. That's cold word for some more government funded housing. They'd rather more projects. But they hate the idea of not having any control over this facility because it's it's not a government facility with with government oversight and government regulation. It's completely independently owned and run by a private entity that they can't control. What you have to understand is the communists, they don't believe in one, they definitely don't believe in patriarchy. And two, they definitely don't believe in free enterprise known as capitalism. Oh, uh-uh. No, the communists, they don't believe in a nuclear family. All that, you know, this is a family neighborhood. What kind of families? Huh? What kind of families are you talking about? Because in order for a community to be strong, it's got to start with its men. And King Randall is trying to raise up the next generation of these men who will then be learning how to be devoted family builders. And Lord willing, they will pair bond. Well, shh. Unless he got a female down there doing doing the female version of what he's doing, I don't know. I don't know how they're gonna build families, but with the state of the, the current state of the female population. But the communists, they don't believe in a nuclear family. They don't, they don't even believe in monogamy, and they definitely don't believe in purposeful patriarchy. I wanna I wanna know who is the they. Down there in Darty County, the they that, you know, is controlling and putting these roadblocks in his way. That's that's what I want to know, because the people who looked like him were the ones who were treating him as if he's the enemy versus the solution to a decades old problem. That's that's some of the questions that I want to know. I want to see who else is going to get involved at the state level to, to, to kind of see if he can make any headway. Why does he have to change what type of facility he's going to put out there? It don't matter the type of facility. The fact that they can't control it and ain't funded by the government and it's going and it, and, and it's actually going to provide actual results, which he's already done. They can't even see the forest through the trees. They can't see the forest through the trees. I noticed how Miss Barbara said that, you know, she she wanted them to build homes. I'm just curious to know what kind of homes, affordable housing homes. When I tell you this is nothing more than the Democratic operative with the Marxist minded Negroes doing exactly what they've been trying to do. Marxists don't announce themselves. They don't raise their hands and say, I'm communist. That's not what they do. But what they do is they do this. They put roadblocks in the way for capitalism to not thrive. They're very deceptive. And what they do, none of the excuses that that older gentleman presented even made sense. How are you connecting the science lab and drugs and guns? Where did you even get such an idea from? These people are operatives designed to stamp out purposeful patriarchy and to stamp out capitalism. Because see, if these young men learn a thing or two from, from King Randall, they're going to learn the, the, the importance of free enterprise in the marketplace and capitalism. They're going to learn to do for self. And the matriarchal Marxist-minded Nazis, they can't have that. Absolutely not. So I know this was spicy. I know I was upset. But to see it in your in your with your own eyes, in their own words, actually say, no, we can't have this. Mine, they already got they got a government facility. You know, anything that the government runs or the county government runs, the state runs, is inefficient and pointless, but they like that. 
that's comfortable. They love when the government is God, when the government is their daddy. They love that. But this, this is, this is too much like what Booker T was trying to do. And you know, the problems and the roadblocks he encountered. So they, they can't have that. But I care. I want to know from you, what are your thoughts on this? Why would they purposely come against this? Is it self-sabotage? Or do you really believe, you know what, there, there is some sort of Marxist communistic undertones with this that don't even make sense. And why is it, why is it that all of the black people said no and the only ones who supported it was one white person and one black person? Somebody answer that question for me. If white supremacy right, is the problem. If racism is, is the source of all of our problems, like the communist Marxist minded people want you to believe you, you tell me, you answer that for me. And then we can have a conversation. Grace and peace, you guys.